Good morning, everybody. I hope everybody's having a great Monday morning. I hope everybody had an amazing weekend. I had a really good weekend, and I'm excited about the week to come. I'll tell you a little bit about that, but I will tell you I'm also enjoying a delicious Starbucks coffee this morning. Iced caramel macchiato for the win. I'm a huge fan of their iced caramel macchiato, but it is a little bit of a cheat for me because I've been doing keto all week, and that has some sugar and some Splenda in it that I should not be having. But anybody who's done keto, especially that first week, you'll notice that there's a huge lack of energy because your body's breaking that addiction to that sugar and the carbohydrate, which is essentially sugar itself. And I actually got something at Starbucks that I wanted to try, and I wish I would have got a bigger one. And I wish that I hadn't got the coffee because I got a matcha tea, a pineapple matcha tea from Starbucks. And it is really, really good. And the matcha tea is actually really good for you. It is a ground green tea powder that is great for antioxidants and it is amazing for your metabolism. And I will probably be drinking a lot more pineapple matcha tea than coffee just while I'm on this keto journey. We'll call it uh, matcha tea and lore, but we really won't. But there might be a lot more matcha tea happening here at my house because it was really good. It tastes a little bitter, but the pineapple brings out the sweetness. So I was really happy with that, and I'm glad that I tried it because it's going to happen a lot more often. So what are we talking about today? Well, I told you I'm reading Ace Coons, The Raves of Sarajevo. That one I'm still working on, and I'll tell you why, because you're going to be like, oh my God, Lauren, it's been like a week. You read books a lot faster than that. The Rose of Sarajevo, well, Ace Coon work in general is very politically driven. And this one takes place in Bosnia during the Serbian Revolution. And there's a lot of people and a lot of different pol politicians and events that I might read a chapter, then I have to go back, reread something, maybe Google something. So Ace Coon's not a quick read. It's a fantastic read, but not a quick one. So we'll be doing a video soon on Ace Coon's work. Because like I said, this is the second book I've read, The Rose of Sarajevo, and The Last Train to Istanbul by Ace Coon. So today we're talking about defending Jacob. And the way that I found this, well, I had read the book back in like 2014, 2015. It came out in 2012, the book did. But I don't turn on my TV very often. Maybe a sporting event or a major holiday, an event, I'll turn on like Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade, things like that. Well, I was watching the NFL draft last Thursday and a commercial came on for this new Apple TV show with Chris Evans, who plays Captain America if you need a face to the name. And it was called Defending Jacob. And the second that I saw it come across the screen, I was like, oh my gosh, I read that book years ago. It was fantastic. And I really, now I want to talk about it in case people want to watch this Apple TV show, Defending Jacob. So the book is by William Landay. And it came out, like I said, in 2012 time period. I read it in 14 or 15. And I can't remember why I read it. It ended up on my Kindle somehow. Normally I know why I bought a book, but this book I didn't know why I bought. But I just ended up reading it. And it was so good. It has to deal around two, two gentlemen, Andy Barber and Jacob Barber. Andy Barber is the father, Jacob Barber is the 15 year old, I wanna say is the age, son. And Jacob Barber is being tried for the murder of his classmate, Ben, who is 14, 15 as well. And there is a lot to do because it's kind of a small town. So Andy and his wife can't even go to the grocery store without being like ostracized. And essentially, Andy is a lawyer himself. I believe he works for the DA or maybe he's a public defender. And he has to defend his son, Jacob, in this murder trial. And one of the best things that this book goes into is it starts to touch on the murder gene. I say murder gene with quotations because I don't know if I fully believe in a murder gene. Basically, if you Google what a murder gene is, it is genetically passed down trait of committing murder. So the prosecution in Jacob Barber's case tries to use it a lot because 
Andy's father, Billy, is actually in prison for rape and murder himself. He's in prison for life. And that being Jacob's grandfather, they're like, well, he was genetically prone to commit this murder. As well as there's some pretty damning evidence online. Jacob had a blog and he kind of talks about murdering Ben a little bit, touches on it. There's a lot of different things. But Andy and his wife, they adamantly, adamantly think that Jacob is innocent and defend him. And I'm not going to give you the ending of the book because I really want you to watch the series or read this book. I'm very excited for it. And I want you guys to give your own opinion. Also, if you guys know what the murder gene is or have read anything about it or done any research, comment down below. Let me know if you agree with me, disagree with me on the murder gene, whether or not you think it's a thing, whether or not you think it's something made up and it doesn't really exist. I'd love to know your opinion. Also, what am I currently reading? Well, you know that I'm still reading Ace Coons Throws the Serial. I promise you I'm going to get that one finished. I know it's been a lengthy read. It will be worth it because I'm going to have a lot to say about Ace Coons writing style and how much she uses political events in a video. And I'm also reading another Kristen Hanna called Firefly Lane. And this one's going to be about sisters. That's what Kristen Hanna writes the best about. She did The Nightingale, the, the World War II sisters that I read, and I'm very excited about that. As well as I have been doing some fan fiction on Wattpad again, I have one story that is completed that is Star Wars fan fiction, and it's called When Falls the Night. And then I started a new Lord of the Rings fan fiction recently, and it is called Return to Erebor. So I have those things I'm dabbling in. I'm constantly writing something. I'm also writing a sequel to The Gift, which is available on Amazon. I am constantly writing. I've got like 10,000 words into the second book, which will be called The Valkyrie. So lots of things coming up for me. If you're a Wattpad reader, look me up. Find my work on there. If you have a Kindle, find The Gift on Amazon. I've got lots of places where you can read my own written work. On that note, though, I hope you guys have a wonderful week. And what are you reading?